Welcome along guys. Well here at PB, we've had this GSXR on loan from Suzuki for 14 months now. We've done a variety of mods to this bike. We've put this bike through hell and back. <laughs> this was actually one of the first GSXRs to hit the UK shores. This bike was flown in for the press launch. So this done a lot of work on track for the initial press launch of this bike when they came out in 2017. It then came to PB and Michael Rutter did a 121, a 121.9 lap, a standing start lap of the TT on it. So that was within the first few weeks of it being with PB. It's then done a multitude of track days with Chris. It's also seen a British winter. All through the winter this bike was commuted on, through the salty roads of Peterborough. So this bike has had probably one of the hardest lives of any one of these GSXRs you could possibly see. So I'm going to talk about well, how this bike has been to live with for that 14 months and 7,500 miles. Anything gone wrong with it, any mods recommended to it, this is your ultimate GSXR 1000 video. If you'd have told me a year ago that I'd be back on a sports bike and loving it, I would have laughed in your face. But this thing is such a, an amazing bike. What I love about this bike, and what has made me change my opinion of sports bikes, is the, thing, is the fact that this is so comfortable. It is such a comfortable sports bike. I sold my Fireblade because I was suffering with a bad back and I was just finding it incredibly uncomfortable to ride. All the weight on your wrists. But with this, I think it's, it's, it's just so much more comfortable. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a seating position. Maybe it's a bit lower. You're not bent over quite so much. There's not quite so much of a stretch. But I just find this comfortable to ride. The pegs are not crazy high. They're at a sensible height, so you're not getting really, really aggravated knees. Provided you get off the bike every hour and stretch your legs, it is perfectly comfortable. The other reason why sports bikes don't work on the road, or I thought they didn't, especially straight four sports bikes, is the fact that you've got no usable torque. So the only way to go fast on these is to open them up, get them past 8,000 revs, and be absolutely caning along. Well this, this, because of this VVT, this has such usable oodles of torque from, well from really from 4,000 revs. You can really cruise on this, there's no need to get right in that power to have any sort of enjoyment. It can do what you need to do, low down, which really does transform the whole riding experience. Gorgeous! It's gorgeous! Another reason this bike is such a delight to use on the street is because of the quick shifter and the blipper. I don't think I have used a bike with a better system than this. It is silky smooth no matter your revs. Quick shifter is gorgeous. Blipper! It just does everything. And a lot of these systems work great higher up the rev range, but I love using a quick shifter and blipper just for normal riding. People say, oh, you don't need a quick shifter unless you're on track. It really does make riding on the road effortless. Gorgeous blipper. Now, in the time we've owned this bike, we've done some mods to this, which I think have really enhanced it and, and made it probably what it is today and why I love it so much. The main thing which has enhanced the handling of this bike is, is dropping the, raising the yokes, dropping the forks down through the top yoke. Because these can be a little bit twitchy. If you get them in the power and you give them a handful, if you're not ultra smooth with it, you can get a bit of a head shake. It's got a steering damper, but it will flap the bars quite excessively, which can, can, can make you feel very nervous and actually put you off from giving it handfuls of gas. So by dropping the forks down, it stabilises the front of the bike. Someone's had a, someone's had a whoopsie. Someone's been pulled. So the BFF suspension is sublime, and apparently 
if you wanted to upgrade your single R model of this, which just has to show a big piston forks, that front end costs five thousand pounds to buy. Those forks are two and a half grand each. They're not cheap items. When you consider that, the actual R version of this, which is what is it, two and a half thousand pounds more expensive than the non-R? It actually makes this R version, double R version, look like an absolute bargain. One of the few bad points about this bike is it can be a little bit vibey when you're on the motorway to sort of 80 miles an hour. There's quite a lot of vibration through the handlebars and a little bit through the foot pegs. That is one of my few criticisms. Handling, <laughs> it's absolutely gorgeous. The brakes on this, there was some criticism when with this 2017 model when it came out. The front brake I mentioned it in my original review on the bike I borrowed. The front brake lever had like a centimetre of movement before it did anything at all. And it was very off-putting. It, 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 it meant you had to really anticipate having to brake because you knew you had to move the lever like almost a centimetre before anything would start to engage. And it wasn't good at all. And that was one of the big criticisms. And there was a lot of, more, lot of people saying when they track the bikes, that you know the front brakes would fade after three or four laps and the, the, the front brake was the weak point of this. For 2018 the Zuki have redesigned the front end as, as part of a rolling update basically. So the front discs are now thicker, the front calipers now have different size pistons within them and it's much much improved. Suzuki have actually retrofitted my bike with the 2018 brakes, even though mine's a 2017 model. As this is one of their press bikes, they have retrofitted it for me. So it's not something they all do to everyone's bike, not for free anyway. But as this is their model, they've updated the brakes to the 2018 spec and they're so, they're perfect. They're there straight away with phenomenal power. They're really, really good. I've also fitted cruise control to this. The GSX-R doesn't come with cruise control. It's got a whole complement of all the other electronics, but no cruise control. Like the S1000RR has cruise control. The Tuono and the RSV4RF have cruise control. So I think it's a worthwhile addition, especially on the sports bike, because you are lent over. You've got a lot of, you've got a relatively a lot of weight on your wrist compared to a naked. So cruise control makes perfect sense to me on a sports bike. And this system is from MC Cruise, based okay, in Australia. Just... It's really good. I've actually got a, a fitting video of this system so if you want to know more about that it may not be out yet <laughs> but it's coming if it is out i'll link it up there but it's an excellent system turn it on set the cruise bingo <laughs> ah i'm now cruising and it's not about being able to let go of the bars which is obviously nice as well but it's just about not having to hold your wrist with the throttle open you can just rest your hand on the throttle grip without having to feel like you've you've got weight on it. those upgraded brakes. Other mods we've done to this is we've fitted Gillies, or Gillies, Gills, however you pronounce it, I'm still unsure, but Gills Superbike School Foot Pegs. These are a lot wider, a lot more grippy, and they've got a lovely little slope on the end of the peg. So if you want to hang off the bike, you can get your foot on that end piece, and it really makes track work much easier. They're no lower than standard. We've still got the standard height rear sets on this. And as I said, they're not very, they're not that high that it really hurts your knees. They're a sensible height. I may think about getting some 
aftermarket rear sets maybe just so I've got an option to perhaps lower the footrest further for like touring and stuff but for normal road riding if you're not doing too many miles the foot peg height is fine that blipper an absolute beast of a bike and the electronics are so gorgeous on it so gorgeous IMUs cornering ABS it's state-of-the-art state-of-the-art electronics which I was never a fan of originally but after riding these new bikes with these aids they really are so gorgeous gives you so much confidence to push them knowing that they're there especially on a bike like this I'd say you needed them and on track I've taken this on track where I've had it a bit damp it's been a bit wet and a bit damp on track and with the traction control turned up oh it's just so nice and it works so well Oh god, I love it! Exhaust! I should mention the sound of this thing. This has got the Pipeworks DCAT system on it. So, we had some initial problems with this bike. One of the few issues we did have with this was with the Woolwich map it had on it originally, it actually melted the cat within the exhaust. Now I don't know whether that was because it was a non-standard map or if it's something these have been doing with, with the standard maps on them, I'm not sure. But with this one, with all the track work it's had, with the Woolwich map, we actually found that it had lost some power. It, we didn't even realise it was down on power really, because you very rarely give a bike full beans when it's been used on the road. But we had it dynoed and it was down to 160 brake where it was 183 originally when it had the wooded tune on it and it turned out it actually melted the cat the cat element within the exhaust was all melted actually restricting exhaust flow so we went to see Pipeworks they offer a decat system whereby they cut out the cat from the standard headers and weld on like a link pipe and the exhaust on the back so this is what it's got on it I've never heard a bike sound so nice as this does it sounds absolutely phenomenal I just love the sound of it I'd quite like to get a full system for this because I don't think that pipe work system I mean it made 184 on the Hilltop Motorcycles Dyno I think it could, it could do more with a full system so I'm thinking of Yoshi's perhaps I'm also thinking about some of the Brock Performance exhaust systems, perhaps, because they've got good gains with those. So it's currently got the Pipeworks, but the Pipeworks sounds gorgeous. I'm worried if I change to a full system, I'm going to lose some of the tone that this bike has because I love the sound of it. Another one of the bad things about this bike, it's got no rear hugger. It's a minor thing, but there's no rear hugger, so the rear shock gets blasted with shit so I've actually got a uh, pyramid plastics uh, designing a rear hugger for this at the moment and they're gonna gonna give me one once it's uh, once it's ready so I have a hugger coming I also have the new nitron road and race rear shock going on and once all that's done they're gonna set the whole bike up for my weight and everything so once all that happens <laughs> go on sir a Tony Hart. Once that happens and they change that shock and they set the suspension up for my weight and spring weight and, and sort the front end out and adjust it all for my weight, it's going to be an absolute peach and I'm, oh, I'm going to be really really sorry to give it back so I'm actually thinking of selling the Super Duke and buying the GSX-R. That is how much I love this bike. That is how much I've done a complete U-turn on the whole sports bike versus naked thing. <laughs> I'm actually thinking of selling my naked and buying a sports bike. Oh, I'm so contradictory. My 
biggest gripe with sports bikes was the fact that you had to go fast on them. You couldn't cruise on them. They're basically a license losers waiting to happen. They're, they're gonna kill you or you're gonna lose your license if you, <laughs> if you ride one for too long. But this one, yes, it's still a license loser and a potential death trap because it's a, a litre bike, a litre sports bike. But because of that usable torque, you don't feel like you just have to go mental on it. It'll cruise. It'll cruise. Oh, in town, the quick shift is good. It, the blipper <laughs> is even better. But the handling, the turning, it changes direction so quickly. It's really impressed me, especially on track. But even on the road, the turn in the direction changes. It's impressive. And this is where that that torque comes in. Because you can shift without having to scream it. Torque! You don't have to open it up. Bags of torque because of that VVT. <laughs> it's so impressive. Oh cruise control on, let's have a little break from going mental. Pressurists. I love this bike, I do not want to give it back. I'm hoping Suzuki will let me keep it a little bit longer. I really do. So there we go, that's it. My one year, four month <laughs> ownership review of the GSX-R. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous bike. I don't know why Suzuki haven't sold more of these. But I don't understand it. I think it looks decent. It rides amazingly well. It is a weapon on track. Absolute missile, beautiful thing on track. It's laugh out loud in your helmet <laughs> how good it is on track. I absolutely love it. And I really, I'm gonna give this back in December. I don't wanna give it back. I wanna keep this. I think it's an incredible bike. If you haven't test ridden one of these, go and test ride one, please. You'll see what a great machine it is. See you later, guys.